All right, so today we are gonna to learn a little bit about the 3D segmentation tools in SimVascular. So the version of SimVascular that I have is from, is from April 6th, 2020. Um, sorry, I think it's, it's the Ubuntu 18 version one, so that's here. It's from, uh, yeah, April, it's April 6th, 2020. Okay, so we start with um, creating a project. So let's go here. So I'll create a temporary project. Let me call that as SV test. And we're gonna start by loading an image. So here we'll use DICOM data. So this is a CT based DICOM data. We'll copy that as a VTI and we'll also scale the image. Uh, converting into, from millimeter scale into centimeter scale. I'm gonna give some name to this image. So as it is loading the image, so so before I start delving into this, I want, just want to give a brief introduction to the 3D segmentation tool. So, so essentially, once you load the image data, as you can see, although the image quality is reasonably okay for a normal segmentation, you can see that there's a little bit of noise here and there. Uh, so first, uh, before proceeding to 3D segmentation, what I generally recommend doing is to filter this noise. So SimVascular has a little bit, uh, some nice tools here. So if you go into tools menu, there is a, uh, there's an option called image processing. Now, in general, all these operations that you're going to perform are, are outside of that regular SimVascular workflow. So you need to be careful with that because the images that you are going to generate by processing these on the original image are not going to be saved in general as part of the SimVascular workflow. So you need to save them explicitly. And there may also be a little bit of corrections that need to be done, which I'll kind of go, go over that shortly later. Um, I'll go over that later. So the first step is, let's say we want to filter this image. There are multiple filter operations that you can do. So for example, let's go into denoising here. So you need to make sure that the image is selected here. So the, once the image appears, then you can choose the operation here. So you have median filter, you have TVD. Uh, there are other morphological operations, but for now we'll only focus on the denoising ones. So let's take the Gaussian filter. Uh, so, um, and then, so for Gaussian filter, that means what it tries to do is it will take a bunch of pixels, applies this uh, Gaussian filter and mask them and replaces, replaces the filter value with the Gaussian filtered value ones. So the pixel intensity will be replaced by the filtered value. And then you can adjust this variance. So let's start with the value, let's say one and execute it. So here by default, it's going to hide the original image. And what we'll use, what you will see is probably that the whole image is going to vanish. All right, so it's, it's, the, the reason is the variance is so high. It's covering a large, um, uh, almost like the entire domain. So we'll just lower that variance and try to redo this process. So let's select this image. Now it appears, execute the filter. Again, this is again probably too high. So let's even further lower this value. I think the value that works for this, if I correctly recall, is probably 0.005. Okay, yeah, so this one looks quite good. The reason is some of the noise that was there in the original data has now been removed that we can clearly see. And if you want to go further and then try to see how much amount of the actual image has been removed due to this filtration, you can actually do a process of arithmetic on these two images. For instance, you can take the second option here, arithmetic two images. So the first image, we're going to select the original image. And let's say we want to see the subtraction. So we want to subtract the filtered image from the first image. So once you do that, then you can see, so, so basically what you notice is that all the edges have been filtered out. So this kind of also gives you an insight into if you, if you are interested in, let's say, tissue segmentation, then you can use this as a guideline to see where your tissue boundaries are. 
Okay, so with that, so let's uh, revisit, let's take, uh, select the Gaussian filtered ones with a variance of 0.005, use this as our baseline image and then work on a 3D segmentation for this filtered image. So before that, we'll just save this image to make sure that we don't lose anything. So go to SV Tash, go into images and just save this. Uh, by default, it's probably in NRRD format. You can select this to be VTI format. Okay, so now that we have a filtered image, what we want to do is we want to invoke the MIT K segmentation tool. So this is the 3D segmentation tool that's currently available in Vascular. I think there, there, there is plan to introduce newer, more uh, other set of tools uh, based on, I think uh, it's, it's called, uh, uh, I think colliding fronts. So that tool will be introduced later, but for now you can use the MITK segmentation, which is in there inside the MITK framework and is very powerful. So let's take the image. So patient image is, let's say the filtered image here. So we need to create a new segmentation before, uh, otherwise you'll not be able to do, uh, these options will not be active. So in order to activate them, let's create a segmentation. So let's call it segmentation one. Okay, so now you have these options that are activated. So there are a variety of options that you can do. So you can do a thresh, simple thresholding, you can do a Otsu thresholding, there's watershed, which is basically, it will fill in regions, which is, it's, it's kind of like an optimized method where there is no, uh, no set of parameters that the user can input. There is also a matching 3D, but the one that we're going to focus today on is the region growing 3D method. So in this method, so what you're trying to do is you'll pick a seed. So once you select a seed at any point, then the algorithm will sort of grow from there, including all the regions inside the, inside the region of segmentation that are within the, some threshold. Uh, where the intensity, if the intensity lies within a certain threshold, it'll include in it. Otherwise, it'll skip. So for that, we need to first understand. So before we do that, let me just quickly um, understand, uh, go to over what regions we want to include and, and and how do we choose the thresholding. So the way to do that is first click at any point uh, using the mouse. So then you'll notice on uh, the bottom right corner here is something called pixel value. So the pixel value around the, wherever, for example, if you're interested in the lumen segmentation, the pixel value is, if you see, it's roughly about every value is about over 600. Now on in contrast, if you look at the tissue side, the basic pixel value is extremely low. For example, this is the left uh, left ventricle of myocardium, and uh, here the tissue's pixel value is about is less than 200, right? On the other hand, if you look at right ventricle, the right ventricle has a value the even within the lumen, it's about around oh, around 250 or so. So we'll just go over a couple of different threshold options and see what is being included and what is not being included in the segmentation. Okay, so let's start with that. So let's take this region growing. So here it says that in order to place a seed point, you have to do, do a shift and left click. So press click and shove left click and you'll get a seed here. Now in order to see, you can also see where you're in terms of globally, you can see here. So a seed kind of appears and you can see where you are. So let's just take the left ventricle. I'm going to focus on the left ventricle segmentation here. Um, and then, so here is your baseline value is about 614. So you need to set a threshold above and below. So let's take it, let's move the lower threshold to let's say about 200, which is outside, which is still outside the left ventricular endocardium, right? But it still includes some of the right ventricular lumen. So the myocardium of the left ventricle is probably outside of this threshold. However, the left ventricle, the right ventricular endocardium will be included here. Let's just see how, we, how the segmentation looks like. And then let's set the maximum to whatever the maximum in the image is. And then we'll run the segmentation. Okay, so here you can see for somehow, for some reason, uh, in my version, it doesn't show up on the image, but if you have a Mac or other, other, so other, uh, other modality, then probably you can even see that this color appears on the actual image as well. Uh, so here you can see all the regions that are included. So most of the regions are included, but there are some of these hollow regions, right? For example, this is the aorta and you see only the edges are included. So how do we adapt? So we need to adapt this region growing algorithm. So once you adapt, all of the region gets, whatever the holes that are, that are there in the original segmentation will be included now. And because our maximum was much higher and the lower was much lower, so you have all the bone structures like spinal cord and everything also included in this. 
Okay, so let's just confirm the segmentation for time being. So we want to overwrite this. So now it shows up here. So if you see, um, so now you can see the whole segmentation. Uh, so let me just navigate this. So you can see that it includes not only the left ventricle, it includes lots of right ventricle, and uh, there's lots of holes and other things that are there. Um, so we can, what we can do is quickly uh, generate a polygonal model. So if you right click on the segmentation here, so whatever you image that you work on, the segmentation will appear underneath that. So just create a create polygonal model of this. It'll take some time because we have lots of regions to be converted into model. So let's give a name for it. So this is seg1 ply model. So this one will appear here, right? So it, as you can see it, so whenever something doesn't show up, for example, in the 3D window, just right click on this and do a global reinit so that it kind of resets everything. So now you can see that it includes not only right, left, but there are so many of other things, like there's lots of pulmonary veins, pulmonary arteries. Uh, it also includes a little bit of coronary arteries in that. Uh, but not of all, not, in general, not all these would be of interest. So what the typical workflow would be to like, to use the 3D segmentation as is for your model in the subsequent phases for modeling and meshing, or you can also use this as a guideline to create 2D segmentations. Or you can also export this because it's much, uh, it's much refined. What you can do is like export it as an STL file. So using, let's say you uh, right click and uh, uh, not here. So this one, the segmentations, um, you can sort of save it as some kind of an STL file and process it in a CAD modeling software where you can clean up this model. There's also other way to refine the segmentation. So let's try to refine, to change the thresholding and see what happens. So let's take our baseline image. There's a filtered image and we'll create a new segmentation with a lower, with a, with a slightly higher threshold. Okay, so let's deselect this so that doesn't appear in the image. And let's move the slide so we can see the left ventricular cavity and uh, select the region growing organ segmentation choose a seed point, and then let's change the threshold to about, let's say 500. So that means we are way above the right ventricular region, but it still includes the left ventricular lumen. And uh, and probably, is, let's just see what, what happens with this. So I'm gonna still use the maximum as the maximum value that's shown here. And let's just run this segmentation. Okay, I think in order to display that, we need to uh, show the crosshairs. So in the crosshairs, you can see that it's only including the regions within the left ventricle. It's not including any of the right ventricle, which is not surprising. And then let's adapt this so that it includes all, it fills all the cavities. There are still some cavities that are not properly filled, but what you can see is clearly only the left ventricle is included, right? There is a bunch, a little bit of uh, vena cava that is included here as well, um, but we can sort of clean that later. Now we can now let's confirm the segmentation so that it saves it. If if you if you were to click any other option without saving the segmentation, then that's going to be over it or it will be gone. So we have to save it. But let's kind of go over some segmentation utilities. So you can see here that there are some holes in this region. And not only that, there are also some regions. For instance, one would kind of one can argue that you're missing some of the regions here, right? Because of the uh, the way of choosing the threshold or something. So it could, it, could, it could be that some of the borders are not properly included. And it could be also that the borders are a little bit, um, little, a little bit rough, jagged, right? So you can kind of smooth them in the segmentation itself. So there are nice utilities. Um, there are various Boolean operations that one could do. So you can choose two segmentations. For instance, if you plan to do a tissue segmentation, then you can choose, you can, you can sort of create a, a left ventricular segmentation like how we did here. And then you can sort of do a masking here. So for instance, you have a contour to image, you have image masking 
that will allow you to create a mask and then you can subtract that from the original image and redo the segmentation. So that is the process that I generally follow for myocardium segmentation. So there are very nice utility operations, Boolean operations, uh, converting a contour that is a segmentation into image. There's also image masking. But the one that we are going to use to clean up the segmentation is a morphological operation. Um, so what we can do now is let's take the segmentation, let's say SIG2. And so there are two structuring elements. So what it is trying to do is it will take an element, let's say either a ball or a cross, and it will run through all the boundaries of the segmentation. And depending on the operation that you choose, for instance, if I choose dilation, then it will include all the regions that are lying within a specific um, uh, size of the ball. So you can adjust the ball radius, for instance, from one, I'll increase it slightly to two. So it, for instance, you can think of it as it will include two pixels outside of the current segmentation. So that is a dilation. However, however if you use erosion, then it will remove two pixels inside. So that's the way these things work. Similarly, you can do fill holes so that some of these holes will be filled up. You can do other kinds of operations too. You can, again, feel free to kind of explore this and it may work, some things may work for you and some things may not work for you. And depending on that, you can choose what to do and what not to do. But for every operation, make sure that you save because things may get overwritten and you may not be able to undo this. Okay, so let's do the dilation operation on this segmentation. So now you can see that most of the holes have been filled and also enlarges and tries to cover the exact, what, what we think as some of the borders more exactly, right? So this is one nice smoothing operation. So once, but, but, but make sure, but for some people who are interested, let's say in vowel segmentation, so then it'll be hard to kind of, you, I would recommend not to do this as kind of operations because as you can see here, the mitral valve in original, segmentation original image was nicely resolved, but now it's all gone. So those are some of the uh, some of the negative aspects of these tools. But if you're inter not interested in something like that, then you can still use this tool. So now what we can do is we can create the polygonal model for this smoothed version and see how the segmentation looks like. So seg to poly. So because it's not appearing, let's do a global re in it. So let's see this. So now you can see a very nice segmentation that only includes the left ventricular cavity, right? So there is a bunch of uh, right atrium, a little bit of right atrium probably, and a little bit of uh, vena cava, but that's, those are probably easy to clean them up compared to the original right whole, whole model that we had. So this one was the old model that we had. Um, let's somehow, oh, not this one, it's this one. Yeah, so this one was the full segmentation that we had. So compared to cleaning this entirely, cleaning this one is much easy in any CAD software. Okay, so, so this is these are some of the basic functionalities of the C3 segmentation tool that are that is currently available. Um, so you can like like I, like I mentioned before, you can export this into uh, you, what you have to do before exporting is you want to create a model because this is a part of the segmentation. So you have to create a model. Let's say um, I'm gonna create name this as model two, right? And then go into SU modeling tab and then say that you want to use create a model using let's say SIG2 poly. So once you do that, your model will appear here. Right, and then you can export this as a regular HDL file. So you can do, do export solid model and you can save it as any of the HDL files. Right, so it gets saved as an HDL, which you can again pull up in any CAD software and then clean the surface. Okay, now another remark that I want to make is that you can, you can use the segmentation directly for modeling or meshing, or you can actually use this, which I normally do to kind of guide your 2D segmentations. 
So for instance, if I want to create a left ventricular segmentation, you can imagine a scenario where I create aorta and I can create another path along the aorta, one path along the uh, long axis, and then create 2D segmentations going along those, uh, going along planes using this usual symbascular workflow. But then I need to make sure that I'm, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm capturing the right regions because it's highly three-dimensional, especially near the basal plane. So in the basal plane, it's very challenging to get these complex structures that are here. Uh, so in order to make sure that we are capturing them correctly, you can use this 3D model as a guideline to do your 2D segmentations. Um, other, and, or you can sort of export this and directly clean them up in the CAD model. So with that, I think I probably have gone through some of the um, more, more, and you can again feel free to play with some of these 3D tools. You can also use some of the 2D tools here. There's a nice paintbrush. There is 2D fast marching approach. There's also a 2D version of the region growing algorithm that you could try. Um, so just feel free to play around with these tools and pick the one that works best for your problem.